We are now recording the June 9th, 2017 Small Business Accounting Advisors. And we're talking scaling new heights after scaling new heights. Mariette, you had the most fun, I swear. <laughs> Watching your posts were great. You want to talk a little bit about your uh, Latino community and, and the presentations that you had and speaking in Spanish? I do. Uh, I do, and I want to forgive. I want to. I want to apologize in advance for my voice. Um, and and definitely, if you hear any background, let me know because we are we are a virtual group, a group of super cool friends, and we can work and talk and hang out from anywhere. So I'm driving, which is very common for this hour. So forgive me if you hear anything in the background. But um, yeah, it was amazing. Um, as many of you know, especially you know you guys in the group. <coughs> It was um, it was the first time ever that any large accounting conference had a, a strictly Spanish speaking track. So Yay. that alone was absolutely yes, that was uh, that was really amazing. It was just confirmation, verification, just you know a really true you know joining to the mission that Latino small business owners are incredibly significant. The numbers show one in every five new business is Latino. Um, we're over 20% of business, small businesses are Latino, um, and several of them are Spanish speaking Latino business owners. So I've been on this mission for a while, as all you know, you know, my brothers own Camino Financial and their small business lending form, their target market is the Hispanic market. So it's, it was very personal for me, uh, you know, outside of the fact that all of us here love small business owners. Um, but the Latino business owner, it was definitely a passion of mine. So, um. <laughs> And I wanted to personally, in case I forget, I wanted to let everybody listening know, and especially people on the call in, the, in Gina's group know that um, when I found out about this, I, I don't know if you recorded it, Gina. I don't know if we, we actually went offline and talked about it, but when I had my session and I was like, God, what am I going to talk about? And I had all this statistics and I had all the uh, embracing the cloud and become a firm in the future. And I know it was for sure Dennis, Linda, I think maybe you, Gina, I think Sarah even, um, both both Sarahs. I think you guys were on the call and you were like, you need to pull in the culture. Like, don't forget, you are, you know, you try, you got to bring in Latinos, you got to bring in excitement, you got to bring in the fact that you guys are very close knit community and you need to really play on that because if you want this to blow up and if you want this to go big and if you really want this to become the, 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 you know, the pathway for other conferences to, to uh, feel that this is truly important. Like all that firm of the future stuff, all that embracing the cloud, that's all good and you're going to eventually get to that, but pull in the culture, basically tug at the heart. And I didn't really think about that until you guys told me, because right away I wanted to like blow their minds with the stuff you and I talk about. And my, 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 my session was totally revolved around that. It's about, you know, we are in a community that if you share something that's amazing and if you like, if you really create awareness of how important we are as a community, then yeah. everyone's going to buy in, in the importance of what we're doing. And so that's really what I talked about. And, um, and it was amazing. It, it blew up. I mean, we started with a, we, we started with this Vanessa Campos and Carmen Monrique that actually own businesses that do training in Spanish. They brought me in last year, QuickBooks Connect. They brought me in. They said, we want you to, we heard that there is a widowed group that they want us to have a Spanish truck. We want you to cut in. You know, we know that if it's the three of us, we're going to do well. But then when I started on the track and we started writing content, I was really nervous because I'm like, I don't think we're enough. Like, how are we going to like have this 10 classes and pull in the community and promote it and share it just with three of us. I'm like, that's not enough. And so I actually talked to the Wooder group and I said, we need to add more to the group. Like I, it, we need more. So we actually invited the Latino tax professionals yes. and they're actually an organization that um, empower Latino tax pros. And so Antonio Martinez who's the vice president and Carlos Lopez, who's the founder, they joined. And so we were actually a group of five. We wrote 10 sessions. Um, we had a VIP tour where I was able to interview 13 vendors, and some of them even had their demos live in Spanish, which blew my mind. Yeah, they totally practiced in Spanish, which I was like, 
almost emotional because I couldn't believe that they went out of the way to do that. And then, um, and then to celebrate our success, I had what's called a pop-up party where I basically, um, it was really funny. It was not planned. Tiffany, many of you guys know about it. Um, and maybe you don't know that Don Patopoulos, the author of Accounting for the Number Phobic, is uh, uh, <laughs> a really good friend of mine. I'm a big, big believer in her mission, which is to double survival rates for small businesses, a million businesses by 2020. That's her goal. So she's a huge advocate of the mission of helping small business owners and empowering them with education. She writes a lot of content. She has a lot of uh, videos and materials to learn from. She's a keynote speaker. She was a keynote speaker last year at Scaling New Heights. She had her class this year. And her and I actually met online because I started following her because I loved her mission, and I said, I need her on my mission. I need her to join my Latino mission. And so I started following her after her keynote last year. I was blown away by her, and I stalked her like I do on Twitter. <laughs> and I stalked her on Facebook, and I started, like, following her and tagging her. And, like, two, three months after I started doing this, back in, like, August of last year, she called me up and she's like, who are you? She's like, what, why are you? No, I'm not kidding. I'm literally being honest. She's like, why are, are you, you like, I love you. You're me? awesome. But like, no, yeah. She's like, you're stalking me. She's like, you know where I'm teaching, you know where I'm, I'm speaking. And then you share everything I speak about. I, you take pictures with my book. I literally have a picture on the sofa in front of a fireplace. I don't know if you've seen it with her book where I like tag, like how amazing her book is. And anyway, long story short, we did this whole campaign where we wanted to get her book in Spanish. And by the end of this year, her book is going to be published in Spanish, which is oh, so amazing. Yeah, the translation. To this, um, her publisher, like some publisher. And so, um, so basically, so the point is, so I got her on the mission. And when she heard, she was like, you guys, when she heard about what I was doing, She's like, you know, Marriott, I like the fact that you guys are writing this content. It's in the firm of the future and all that. She's like, but where's the culture? Same thing that you guys told me. She's like, where's the excitement? Where's the joy? Where's the music? Like, that's what Latinos are all about. And I was like, and you know, she's obviously super not Latino. You know? she's, she's an awesome woman, but she's not Latino, but she's super into my mission. And she's like, you need to pull, she's like, you need to pull in like something that the Latinos will like. And I'm like, well, what? What should I do? And she's like, you need to go ahead and start doing a campaign like you do. And I want you to go ahead and say, Scaling New Heights 17 Salsa Party. And she's like, and you got to tell everybody that there's going to be this salsa party at Scaling New Heights. Don't miss out, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, but I'm not going to put together a salsa party. I'm like, that's like a lot. I don't even know how many people are going to go. Like, that's going to be awkward if there's only like five people there, you know? And she's like, who cares? Who cares? Just do what you always do. Start doing a campaign, tagging, tweeting, all that. So anyway, the funniest part is, so that was part of my campaign for the Latino um, track was salsa party, salsa party. Join us at the salsa party. So I get to the actual conference and people start pulling me aside and they're like, so where's your salsa party? What time is it? What day is it? When is it going to happen? And I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? So I was feeling so awkward. I'm like, oh, no, this is the funniest part. And it's okay if the Woodward group is listening. So I sent an email to the Woodward group, and I'm kind of like, okay, this is happening. You know, I kind of did this campaign to pump people up. People actually think there's going to be a salsa party. Like, can I have one? Like, <laughs> is it okay? Like, where could I do it? Like, what could I do? No response at all. So I'm like, oh, my gosh, even worse. Like, I'm like, what do I do, you know? So I figured, well, maybe they're just kind of like, we're not going to respond, but at the same time, we're just going to like let her figure it out, you know? So kind of like the whole, you know, the whole saying is better to ask for a call, you know, to ask for, what is it? Ask for forgiveness than permission. Yeah, so the funniest part, yeah, so, th so this is the funniest part. So I'm uh, literally Monday night and Dawn, so this is it. So Dawn, when she gets to the actual event, she starts telling everybody, we're having a salt party on Tuesday night. She literally is a, oh yeah, Tuesday night, salt party, Tuesday night. It was so hardcore that we were having these really cool, hopefully you guys will watch them. Woodard has his live streaming videos where they were doing live streaming interviews throughout the whole event. Really good ones oh, for nice. everybody that was presenting. 
Did yeah. you guys see it, Jared? Have you seen them yet? They're really I've good. Very professional. Them, yeah. yeah, I've seen some of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're so good. <laughs> yeah. So Dawn, I didn't even know. Uh, in her interview on Sunday, she goes and does this beautiful interview with the executive director of Insightful Accounting. And, like, she talks about her profitability class and everything. In the last 30 seconds of her class, I mean, of her interview, she's like, oh, and by the way, don't forget, Marianne Martinez is having a salsa party on Tuesday. I'm like, oh, my God. No, she didn't. So, so I am like, no way. And the, I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe she did that. So I'm feeling so much pressure. I want to keep it cool. I don't, I mean, I want Water to Group to invite us again. You know what I mean? That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I don't want to like make this into something that's like, they're not going to be like, I can't believe they had a salsa party. So, so I was like in a really weird place. So I'm on my way from Monday night, the whole Spanish track, all seven of us, we all, we all went out to dinner to just celebrate and to meet each other in person. Cause a lot of us hadn't met in person before. So we went out to dinner, and on the way back, I'm in the car with Antonio Martinez from Latino Tax Pros, and I'm like, okay, Antonio, I'm really stressing out. I'm like, tomorrow is supposedly a salsa party, and I don't know what to do. I don't know where to have it, and like, I don't know. And he's like, Marriott, seriously? He's like, if anybody can pull off the salsa party, you can. And I'm like, Nobody I even know, but I Music in a room. <laughs> Yeah, and so then he goes, I go, I go, well, what should I do? And he goes, well, he goes, I'm going to tell you something that I think is really funny. And I'm like, what? He's like, have you noticed that every single, we have 10 classes. He's like, have you noticed that every single one of our classes is in the back of the hall in a classroom called Fiesta 9? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't really notice. But yeah, he's like, every single Spanish class has never moved out of Fiesta 9. Yes. And so then I was like, okay. He's like, well, there you go. Salsa party and Fiesta 9. It's meant to be, right? <laughs> and so then I was like, oh my God. I said, well, I guess. He's like, Marriott, we already have a room. We already have surround sound. All we got to do is pull the, the typical Latinos. We move the chairs. We move the tables. We clean out the whole room and we turn on the music and we dance salsa. Like that is who we are. That's what we do. And I was like, okay. I'm like, fine, I'm going to do it. So then on, on Tuesday morning, from Tuesday morning until Tuesday at like 5.45, I start tweeting, tweeting, yes to nine, salsa parties, stress to nine, who's going to come to my salsa party, yes to nine. And it was so funny. So if you guys could see the video, I think I had like maybe 50, 60 people there. It was awesome. Um, it was so awesome, so amazing. I even had people afterwards that night saying, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I missed the salsa party. I was like, oh, my God. It, so, yeah, like, it, it, it was, like it was awesome, pretty amazing. Awesome, awesome time. And Maria, as talented as you are at everything else, you can dance, too. Yeah, like Hector. Oh, we were having fun. Hector, Hector was like the, Hector was the shining star. Machine. Oh yeah, Hector! Everybody, there was people in there that were dancing. It was doing the moves real, and real was, tall guy. <laughs> oh, from Hub Doc, the the blonde, oh, the blonde, right? Oh, oh, that was a riot. Yeah. Oh, it was so fun. So yeah, it was very successful. I wasn't sure how it was gonna work out, but I was so like. Like, really, honestly, I was really, like, touched and just blown away by the support, by the support of the people that really feel that this is important. That's mm -hmm. really what just took me back. I, 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 I it's like confirmation that this yeah. is, this is, this is definitely the beginning. So, yeah, it was, I would thank you guys, though. I thank you for turning my mind because I was trying to do it all professional, which it was very professional. The content was, yeah. was amazing. But I had to put in my little fun, my little culture, my salsa, and that's totally you guys. You guys helped me with that. And Dawn Patopoulos, my goodness, that woman, she would not give up. She would not give up on the salsa party. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty amazing. So that's how that all worked out. Well, congratulations, Marriott. You rock. Yeah, Marriott. Thank one you. Thank that you. I've realized is that there's a lot of people out there that – they just don't want to lead, but they want somebody else to lead so they can follow. 
And so they're just waiting for somebody like you to say salt to party. And then it's like, yes. <laughs> and they'll all, they'll do you know, whatever they do to help it succeed. But for some Linda, reason, you know, you're so you're, right. I had people come up to me privately and tell me exactly what you said. They were saying, we have been waiting for someone to represent, to lead, to be the force of nature, to, to, to share with us that they really were truly willing to take this commitment. And we're waiting to just come, get, you know, to, to, to follow you, to stand beside you, to join your mission. We've been waiting for you. I mean, and I'm talking, I won't drop names, but very important people, uh, people that are very established in our industry, influencers, you know, I, I mean, a few of them were already keynote speakers and they were like, Marriott, this is awesome. Like we're on board. And so again, I just, we needed to do it. Someone needed to do it. And I, I, it was an honor. It was nothing other than an honor, very humbling honor to be yes. able to be that representative. So it was awesome. Really, really awesome. Great job. Congratulations. You're yes. amazing. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. We'll do. So on the subject of scaling new height, new heights, who else went? Sarah, you were there. I, went, I, I actually went one day, but we came in, we came in, um, Monday afternoon and so I got to see people like it like as people were coming out of the sessions I was like sitting on a bench and <laughs> that's what you said you were going to do and you did it yeah so that was uh so Monday night there was the Intuit party and then the uh, T-sheets party and then Tuesday of course those go late I don't know how people do the late thing and then back in at seven and sessions all day. You're much younger than us, Sarah. No, oh, it was, I was, it was unbelievable who was in that crowd. But <laughs> so, um, we got to sleep in a little bit on Tuesday and then I met with, uh, the, the man that I, I hired, um, my new programmer, he was there. So we met for lunch. Nice. Um, and then afterwards, we went to dinner. I called it the Aussie crowd. So it was uh, Stacey Brin and Clayton Oates and Melanie Powers and Juliet. I don't remember her last name. Um, and Mark. I was with my husband. Aurora. Today. We all went out to dinner. That was a blast. So we get back. We get back to the uh, hotel and T Sheets is at it again. <laughs> so <laughs> we're back in there. And then. Um, and then I had to get to bed because I did get a ticket for Wednesday. So um, what I really wanted to see was Greg Bosen, who is the, uh, he writes QuickBooks Made Easy for Nonprofits. And oh. he's out of Atlanta. And so I've seen his videos and I've heard about him. The man is hysterical, absolutely hysterical. And he had a part one and then a break and then a part two. We went right through the break, and then we we must have talked till six six thirty. Wow! I mean, you know, and then we were texting, and 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 on the way home yesterday, he called and he said, "Can I run something by?" And so we were, you know, bouncing things off each other. I said, "Call me anytime." I mean, he's my new friend. <laughs> and I'm thinking, all right, I've been doing QuickBooks desktop since you know it came out. I pretty much know my stuff, right? So I think I want to meet him. I was, you know, and I'd read his book and everything. I was like, yeah, I got it. He got some, he taught me some cool stuff. Nice. nice. <laughs> some stuff I hadn't even thought about. And he said that usually he's, he's teaching or speaking to users versus his peers. He wasn't used to like a room full of accountants or people ah. that are already in business, you know? So right, he would right. do something, we'd go, well, what if you do that? Well, you, because you're ahead of me. Stop. <laughs> And uh, and then he go, hadn't thought of that, and he'd like pop in. But he, what was fascinating was he would have desktop, and he said, "So can we do that in QBO?" And he'd pop into QBO, and then he'd do it. He go, and the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Uh, but then, but then we were like, okay, like with the budgeting, it was like, well, you know, QBO does this. I go, QBO wins. <laughs> And we go over. It was just so that was worth. It was two hundred fifty dollars a day if you went last minute. It was worth every cent. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. That was good. And then we went to Disney afterwards with Clayton. 
You pardon me? We went to Disney after we went to Animal Kingdom. Oh, okay. They have the new um, Avatar. Remember the movie with the blue mm, people? Right, right. Yeah. And David Leary, who is uh, big with Into It. Yes. Yeah. Red hair. Um, he had gone out because they they'll open up just if you're staying at the at the at the hotel, you can go in from eleven to one thirty a.m. <laughs> And he and he and his family went like Tuesday night or something crazy, right in the middle of the. And I mean, that guy's like walking big. But um, he said it was a two-hour wait for the ride. And I'm like, and he goes, worth it, do it. So at midnight, we got in line for this ride. And about halfway through, I'm thinking, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you, if you ever get to Disney do the two hour wait it is worth every second and then after we got up and we're all like what it was fantastic we were the last group and the guy goes want to go again <gasps> it was oh a God. real we're like oh yeah and you put your 3d glasses back on <laughs> it's like wow well, oh awesome. yeah it was cool so and then we had to get up really early friday to drive back visit visit a sick friend and then drive back and um Poor Mark. It was it for you? Yeah, it's about a little over four, maybe four and a half hours max, okay. depending okay. on the traffic. Maybe four. Not too so bad. Had to rush back and had to review two audits that were done. So, so today I'm just sort of <laughs> recovering. <laughs> and I got to bed last night, but it, both of us woke up and looked at each other like, "Oh, we can go to sleep another five hours." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well your mind you're, it's not just physically but that's a lot of it because you're just but when you're oh, engaged you like that and talking and learning and you know it's you just, just can't do that virtually as fun as virtual is right you need right. that in-person experience yeah and the number one thing i heard was you're so tall <laughs> 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 Tiffany, can yeah. you talk? Yeah, about I met how Tiffany. Throw your your cat. What's that? May <laughs> intro your cat? Yeah, we saw fur go by a little yeah. while ago. I'm visiting my sister. I extended my stay in Florida, so that was oh, her. Oh, nice, like, yeah, nice. Everything. Kind of a so, photo bomb in a way. <laughs> right. So how did you enjoy scaling new heights? Was this your first time? No, I went to um, uh, Nassau last year, to the Bahamas. To the Bahamas, so my, wow. Yeah, so this is my second year, but I really, really enjoyed it. It was really great because I had been so involved with so many of the Facebook groups this past year that it was like meeting old friends finally. And Sarah, oh my God, you're so tall. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. Yeah, no, it was really great. It was, I found that this year um, had a lot of great content, like really relevant content. Mm -hmm. It was. It wasn't yeah, just it was theory, just, like. No, it was so mind blowing. It was, it was like stuff that you could like totally implement, and like 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 Les McEwen was just like like completely speaking to me. It was just so like chilling. It was amazing. Nice, nice, mm -hmm. great. You all had an awesome time. I'm happy to hear that. The, the best mm -hmm. part is the networking and seeing the people, but then also the the icons that you you've seen. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like the uh, stream was a lot better this year in terms of stability and oh, also the yeah. the variety. Yeah. Yeah. The variety. Yeah. yeah, the Wi-Fi was so much better. It was great. <laughs> and Jet, uh, Joe's keynote. He is an awesome speaker. Oh yeah. And his daughter. He had his daughter up there. That was so. Yeah. Yeah. See, even though I wasn't at the conference um, Sunday, Monday. Tuesday, with the live streaming, I could have my iPad. So I was like, yeah. you know, in yeah. the restaurant. Yeah, I was watching then, on my phone for a while. Yeah, and then t uh, Tuesday, I was, I mean, I was already tired. And so I curled up, on, I went back to the room on the bed and I had the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you That's just nice. I was like, uh -huh, and then I took a nap. 
So I love I loved how the live streaming with the interviews, I loved how you were able to like follow someone and see what they were teaching about. Like mm -hmm. they had so many different ones where you could actually like Heather Satterly with, and then, then it would be like colleagues like Heather Sally with Alicia or like Dawn with like, you know, just, it would be different people. You know, Ingrid Estrem did like tons of interviews with her colleagues. Mm -hmm. And so you would kind of follow Dawn Brolin. Oh my gosh. She's like the best and the most hilarious oh and the most brilliant person oh you'll gosh. ever hear see. Yeah. Oh, Dawn is, will blow your mind. Doesn't matter what she's teaching, but when she talks about tax fraud and, you know, her specialty, but she's so like funny and engaging and brilliant, but you don't even have to go to her class. You could just watch the interview she did yeah. and like be blown away. You know what yeah. I mean? So I love that they did the live streaming. It was a little stressful because, you know, especially if you were teaching, you would do the live streaming like in between your classes or when you're running from place to place. But afterwards, when I watched it, because I know Vanessa Campos and Carmen, they did four different live streaming. I was like, whoa. But, um, but then it was really powerful because if you really weren't sure like what the Yeti is and what this whole thing was about, like if you took advantage of the live streaming and were watching it, maybe like when you got back to your room, or whatever, like for instance, me on Wednesday, I left early because I had to be home because I got there Saturday and that's like a lot of days away from home and my kids. So I watched all of Wednesday's keynotes in my room while I was packing. And it was so cool because I got to experience it while I was still getting ready and it was, it was awesome. I think that that was like super rewarding that he did that um, this year. I really liked it and it was very good quality too. Like it wouldn't cut out or anything. Yes. It was really good. And and they recorded the live stream so that you could see them later, which was wonderful. Yeah. I don't think yep. you do that last year. I think last year you had to catch it while they were actually doing it. This yeah. year they recorded it so you could watch it at any time. And that was nice. Has there been any talk that maybe they might record the set individual sessions and then sell them later? You know, for people um, that can't go. So they, I, I was actually in a town hall um, afterwards with, with um, Skill and New Heights. And they had done that last year in um, Napa. They had actually recorded it, but apparently only six people paid for it. So they're like, it didn't make any sense for them to be doing it again this year. Um, so it was not economical. Mm. Oh, that's a shame. I know a camp yeah, no. uh, Sleater did that when I went. You, could oh, you know what? I need. I, I remembered that recently that I need to go and download all that material before it gets replaced with this year's material. Right. Yeah. Right. I was kind of intrigued by the theme for next year. Did you? Did they go into much detail after the after the uh, key, the session? I mean, like, sort of. It seemed like how to prevent. The machine from replacing you was kind of the sense I got. Um, well, I think well, <laughs> what is this thing? is just my take on it is that it's um, mastering the machines. I think something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's that um, it's going to be inevitable that artificial intelligence is going to be replacing mm -hmm. some of the functionalities that we are doing, and that we need to um, be working on. Things such as like the relationship with the client and becoming, you know, like an advisor to the client, not just, you know, like doing the, you know, the, the entries and that sort of stuff. So, you know, fostering the, the personal relationships, which I mean, most of us do already, but. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, there were some people that changed jobs. One was Misty Mega. She used to be um, in theater, and now yeah. she's working for T-Sheets. She was with CPA yeah. Academy for a while, I thought. Yeah, she was, yeah. Um, another one was Frank Coker. I don't know if any of you <laughs> Coralytics. He used to be Coralytics. Now he's working for Joe Water. Who? Oh, good, good. That must mean that Coralytics probably didn't go. Is, it, is Coralytics still around? Um, I haven't looked lately. Or neither. Because I know the woman that yeah, was... Yeah, they're still Chris, there. Chris, they were... They're still there. They were there. They had a booth. Carly. Okay. Good. Yeah. It's great. And Jim McGinnis just didn't really. Jim McGinnis is with TC. Jim yeah, but Jim McGinnis is more of a, of a, he's an advisor. He's not actually an employee of. 
He, so he's not working he, for Intuit anymore? No. So, oh, so I didn't he's know He's no longer the um, uh, pro advisor rep for Intuit then. He's now no. for T-Sheets. No, well, I think he's on his own, but he's going to be doing some accountant advising uh, for T-Sheets over the summer. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Anyone else know of anyone that's changed jobs? Yeah, the um, Tiffany, did you talk to the Cloud Runner? People? Yes, I did. Well, and I'm talking to I them, but I couldn't up. figure out what it was that they did. <laughs> and then this so morning, I got the the printout of everybody that I talk. Do you wear these little things that it's recording when you're walking in and out of the session rooms for yeah. CPP that knows <laughs> if you stayed the whole time and talked to your other. And so I got a, a common delimited file of everybody that I that I connected with at the booths and stuff like that. And it says Cloud Runners formerly in sync. No, um, I was talking to them. So they're, they're taught, they still have in sync, yeah. but they're also running, they're starting up Cloud Runner as well. And what Cloud Runner is going to do is it's going to be a white paper. Yeah. So what will happen is, is you'll build your technology stack for your clients yeah. and it'll be labeled as you and they'll go into your portal and you'll be able to offer them like QBO and T sheets and HubDoc oh, I and everything that else. Part. And it's going to be white papered under you. Yeah. Branded. Super exactly. So they see accounting services bureau and then yeah. you, they, then, cause he said, well, <laughs> we can let I said, what if they're on right networks or something? Is it, cause it, are you a desktop? Because no, he but said, they will be also QBO desktop to right networks or whatever. Right. And I'm like, yeah, it wasn't making any sense to me because it's not just desktop. It's, um, it's everything, anything, anything that we can have hosted, anything. And well, as well as a SAS. As what? Well, yeah, as a SaaS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, now, like, if you go into a hosted desktop, you can't really go to QBO from there. Mm -hmm. Well, there was something about sort of a hybrid cloud they were talking about. The guy from Citrix, I think it was. It sounded like they'd be able to integrate, you know, like SaaS applications along into a, you know, a Citrix environment. It was kind of the impression I got from the the speech that they guy was given. Mm -hmm. Did I? Am I misinterpreting that, or is that? Did you see that? It was like the first no, day, I, I didn't. believe. I don't know. It was like the first day, when the speech was the first day. Well, Sarah, that's going to help you. You have somebody on Premiere that you're having problems with. Number of um, users. Yeah, what happened was I bought, we bought a three user license and those three are in it all day long. And then I put my accountant's version on my, on the, actually my machine died because I would have it on my machine. So there's four of us working. Got it. And then my machine was old and it died. So we installed it on the server and that was cool. I could still come in and work. Then when we went to 17, the server software is too old and it, and it won't let us load the mm -hmm. new version of Explorer. Oh, Edge. Oh, whatever. It, well, it's four, it nine, nine, eight or nine or anyway. So QuickBooks doesn't work. So we called the IT guy to find out how much it was to update the server. It's thousands of dollars. They're just, they're going to milk the just server for for the longer and then the new wow. server will have it. But so then for 99, well, I told you about this for $99 for some sort of product that made the owner's machine a virtual machine. Mm -hmm. And so he can be in and I can come into my own desktop. He doesn't even know I'm there, but I'm on his box. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. What we didn't notice was we hit the three user. It's all his licenses because uh -huh. I can't load an accountant's license on his box. You can't load two QuickBooks on the same box. Mm. Uh, so... Now we're back to, can you get out of QuickBooks so I can work? Yeah. Well, can you make his machine, the virtual machine, the server, and then have others log on? No, no. See, a true server, well, a terminal server, a true terminal right. server would let us load, you know. The but, three separate ones. Yeah, yeah. but this is, nah, 
you know, it, it, where, where are you doing an inexpensive, expensive band-aid type thing? So, but that's okay. You know, so you, you know 30th is your year end, so we just have a lot of work to do. So, but ever since, this is a company that was in big black books for 50 years. And through the years, they still have the same staff. So I give, I give them a hard time about, got your feet up on your desk eating bonbons. <laughs> <laughs> these gals used to type hand type i tell you what most most accountants bookkeepers have no concept of this i've taken the ar cards where they've manually oh my god invoice minus payments and typing statements oh on the last day of the month gosh that is oh so my the woman is there she's god. been there 35 years she can type like you would not believe <laughs> And so when I automated them, it's like, it's funny, it's funny, but AR person, AP person, boss does the payroll. Payroll used to take a solid day, solid day. Hmm. And he's got, it's a game now. He's got it to 18 minutes. Mm. Wow. Wow. Oh, I love this client. So what's he using for uh, hours? Is he using T-sheets or? No. Index cards. <gasps> he puts each. Matter of fact, we were audited and I thought, I've never, that's one part of their business I really didn't delve into. Like, what do your, what do your time sheets look like? Are your employees signing them? What are you doing? And they all show up at work and, and the, the one gal, she keeps them on her desk and she'll say, hi, Fred. She's writing it down. She's clocking them in and out. Plus, we have I'm, the work orders for all the, the jobs that they're working on, so we can back it up with that. And then she, she told us all up and hands it all to the owner, and he goes in and puts his hours in. Wow. I've tried. I'd love to get them on Mineral Tree, automate the check writing. They write like 300 checks a month. Right. And we just had to close another bank account because of check fraud again. So it won't, but the thing is something like a bill.com protects you, protects your routing number and your account number. Right. Mineral tree actually prints your checks. So it's just, it's the same. Bill.com prints checks too. They print checks on their own bank account. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Mineral tree uses our, you, it, it, is the middle man, the middle piece between QuickBooks and online banking. Mm. So online banking, you know, really it's just, they're doing the printing and the stuffing and all that stuff. So, but, um, I would love to automate that because I keep, I keep saying, you know, one day, you know, he, he's been there every Thursday. He started there when his dad started. So I'm like, have you ever missed a Thursday? <laughs> I can't get sick. I can't. Wow. I can't even imagine yeah. that. I can't. That's like horrible. No, you can't take a week vacation because you can't miss a Thursday. Can't miss a Thursday. It's but he has me. I can step in. I could, he has the comfort of knowing because I know is I know the system that I could step in. And they then, burned to the ground. I'll tell you one thing. They burned to the ground. Oh, boy. In the early 90s. Somebody firebombed them. We had this wacko wow. person that was throwing my, my cocktails, whatever, through uh, business businesses. And um, that was on a Sunday night. On Friday, they closed at 5 on the dot, 502. The parking lot is empty. Okay. Wow. And I got there too late. And I had their quarterlies. And I had, and this is back in the days of write up. So I had their check stubs, all their deposit stuff. I had a big envelope for everything for the whole quarter and their quarterlies. I was going to deliver it. And by an act of God, I didn't make it. They were gone. So it was all still in my car. And um, they got firebombed that Sunday night. And <laughs> let me tell you. Guess what we found out the owner was doing, which is just blows my mind. His grandfather and father had taught him that 
if something happens to your business, the vendors will tell you what you owe them. Your customers won't tell you what they owe you. Right. right. And he, you know that those cards, the AR cards in the rack, picked it up and put it in his car and took it home every single night. <laughs> wow. Wow. Swiffy gets Swiffy gets hijacked. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh my God, we had the AR card. <laughs> We had the had air the cards. cards and you had all of your quarters. I had payroll. I had, I had three months worth of check stubs so that I could, I could recreate. What I did a spreadsheet and I recreated their, um, all the garnishments and all that stuff. Well, <laughs> that's back when he was going single to, you know, and I, we were able to recreate the payroll records. Wow. And then, um, what else did we do? So I had written up the books, so it was really just a good a month. And then um, the insurance company flew down an accountant, a forensic accountant who minored in fire or like disaster. Arson, arson or yeah. <laughs> I said he needed a degree in that. How cool is that? <laughs> you know? So um, that was very, very fascinating. Very fascinating. So, did they find um, out who did it? Oh yeah, oh yeah, they caught him. Right, he was actually uh, was on a, his way to do the uh, the boat. Was he like a pyromaniac or something? Yeah, he was. Oh, my God. Sarah, ah, Sarah. Um, there is actually a other, and I don't know if it's I don't think it was Mirror Street because they had a really weird name. Yeah, there is an other company that I walked around and met um, at sailing that basically they were like you know a, you know basically. A, similar to bill.com but they allow pluto? you to use your bank account to, what is it pluto yes that one yeah, yeah. that one yeah have, have you looked into that one well because, i yeah i did that whole sheet where i saw i watched v videos and demos for weeks and the top four were bill.com mineral tree uh i've already forgotten pluto pluto is in there pluto's only online um oh okay got it anyway i have the whole my goal was to be able to work in quickbooks and just sync up to the approval prop up to the uh automated company not what do you mean it's only online like it only works with the online product video. yeah it only works with video. i'm pretty sure okay then it can't be that one it can't okay, be that I'll one because I'll, they, I'll pull up my they told me yeah and it, I mean, the way they explained it, that you basically use your own bank account, they did a check, and they did an ACH. I mean, I think the one thing I really liked about what they told me is that they don't have, they don't charge by user. It's just like, it's almost like the HubDoc thing. It's like a one, one user, and it's one price, and it's unlimited users. Yeah, that's, um, what, that's why I went with Mineral Tree. And all that. Yeah, that's why I went with Mineral Tree, because um, if you go with Bill.com, the little client, you can't use it for little clients because by the time right, you exactly. $30 for the QuickBooks file and then the user fee and all that, you can't afford it. So if I've got a client who's got like 10 bills a month, 10 checks or, you know, so with Mineral Tree, I have a Mineral Tree account with all my clients and I could, and then we're hooking them up. And so it's, it, they don't charge by user. But the best part is if I do have point of sale and then so I'm linked up, um, you have to have the point of sale and the QuickBooks desktop on the same box and it feeds accounts payable over, payables are already there. So Mineral Tree, I can do all my accounts payable work in desktop where I'm fast, I can see those addresses popping up and you know, I'm just, I'm better in desktop and it's, right. it's up in the corner and it's sinking every five minutes. Nice. Uh, very One thing nice. I'd be curious about is on at Scaling the Heights, what was the ratio of QBO to QuickBooks desktop? I mean, was it predominantly QBO or did they have some desktop there? It it was it was a pretty good mix. Was it? Yeah, it's not it's not like QB Connect, which the emphasis seems to be QBO. QBO, yeah. Hmm. So it's back to the billing, Pluto, Sarah Prevost uses that. Yeah, I'm pulling up my smart sheet if I can find my smart sheet here because I have a 
the name of the planet that got deplanetized. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and then it came yeah, back. It, sound, it sounded really good. They pulled me aside and spent like 20 minutes talking to me because I guess um, they were, what we did also, uh, Vanessa Ocampos, um, one of the Spanish instructors, she was so amazing. She actually was calling the vendors up a month before the, uh, the conference and she was doing demos with them in Spanish. And so we have a YouTube channel, um, and I've been sh I shared about it a lot before the event, where I put like a landing page on my website, and everything scaling is on there. So I had a countdown. I had all the YouTube videos that Vanessa did, and she was wanting to have a video done for her, and so I guess she can find Vanessa. And so I was walking by, and she's like, "Wait, hey, you are in the Spanish truck." I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, okay, I need to give you the spiel. I need to tell you about how amazing our app is. And then tell Vanessa, because we really want to do the demo in Spanish. We couldn't get on her list, but, you know, let's do a post-conference. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, tell me about it. And so it sounded really good. I mean, it basically sounded like a bill.com. Everything bill.com does except for just one flat price, which I Were love. Were they back and against like, the wall? Wow. Were they against the wall? No, they were not against the wall. They were actually, if you go against the wall, oh, where, wait a minute, uh, okay, you know where they were? Circulus? They were next to Finograph. They were next to Finograph, right? Ne like kind of, if you're at Finograph, you start walking up the aisle. Yeah. They were right there. They were like, it's like a black logo. It's like a, they have like a black, like a, like a really black booth, but with like white print. And it was a really weird name. I think Circulous. it was like Fluio dot Circulus. XT is the old XT that one. bills. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's, it. that's not, it. Yeah, yeah, he was out with us at the T sheet party. Yep. 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 Okay. That's top, exactly it. Yeah, yeah, Circulus. The top four were Mineral Tree, Beanworks, Circulus, Bill.com. And then Pluto yeah. was off my list because I'm I need desktop. Um, but Circulus, um, they have a good price point. Um, I said it was a really clean interface. What was my big X? Um, oh, well, that's interesting because I have, um, bill.com uses a settlement account and so does Circulus, but you said they're using the client's account? That's what they said. They said you Maybe use your own routing it. number, tracking. They, that's what they said because I said, well, how does it exactly work? Yeah. And they said, you do, you use your own checking account, blah, 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 blah. So I don't know, maybe she explained it wrong, but that's, that, that was like, really? So it's really? not like because, your information. Yeah. I have like, it's your, it's like, it, Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they changed that or maybe she, maybe she misunderstood me. Cause I was like, it's not yours. It's mine. She's like, yes, it's yours. I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah. that was a little different. Okay. So well, that one, then I've got, but it sounded good. Let me highlight that one because that one might be. You have to research that and things change, too, Sarah. Huh? And then confirm it. Confirm that that was right because it. Yeah, yeah maybe I'm she didn't highlight say it right. that one. Um, that uh, two way sync with desktop. The only one that did that was Mineral Tree. They were really good. What else do I have? An X. Um, they didn't have two factor payment verification. They sh that should be coming. Yeah. Um, now they charge per QuickBooks files. What I have here per QuickBooks files. Yeah, the bill.com and Circulus have a fee per client, and then and then I have unlimited clients, and I had an an orange because I wasn't sure. Hmm. It was unlimited users, but I, I mean, I definitely think they're gonna. I mean, of course, they're gonna charge by QuickBooks client, but. They said unlimited users under each client. Right, right, right. Here it is. Unlimited users, $20.50 a client, which is cheaper than $30 per, for each bill.com. Exactly. And, yeah, and that's still the price. It's still $20.50. Yeah. That's still the right, price. So the minimum yeah. fee, the minimum monthly fee is $2.50. And then cost of their data entry team, which is in India, is $0.99. Cents. Well, I haven't been so using that data at all. entry, like you have people behind the scenes, like Mineral Tree, that do the data entry for you. Yeah, but I like to do my own data entry. So, what the hell? <clears throat> uh, okay. Business per okay, cost per check. It was the almost the cheapest 
for the per check is $1.39 and ACH is $45. So ACH is a little, okay. Yeah. Whereas bill.com is $1.49 and 49. And then- Have you guys checked out Flight? Vinograph's new um, dashboard Flight? Mm -mm. You have to check it out. We should bring them in for our demo, Gina. It's so be beautiful and it's Flice. so interactive. Flight, it's called Flight. So it's basically Vinograph, but they changed the dashboard and it's got this whole social media interactive moving wow. card like feeling. Well, I'm not sure it's that like I put my, set my, my finances on social media. <laughs> oh, no, it's that. not on social media. It's not on social media. Oh, okay. It's got the look. You know how the look, when you're looking at it, and, and your social media, they look like cards, like when you're going down on a feed? You know when you're okay. looking down on a feed on, like, Twitter or Facebook? Oh, yeah. So their look is more like a feed. It looks like a feed where you can just, like, because yeah. so, obviously they're making it very mobile-friendly and dashboard-friendly, so it looks like you're looking at social media, but it's yeah. their platform, but they got yeah. the feeling of that. You know? What does it, what does so it do? I personally think it's so beautiful. I um, it? Well, it does the same thing. <laughs> it's a financial dashboard. So okay. obviously you can, you know, it's basically you can upload all of your clients' financial uh, financial data, automatically see yeah. all of their numbers, all the profitability, budget, all that. But the beauty of it, it's got this whole, like, nimble effect. And I there's no other way for me to explain <laughs> it than nimble because I love nimble because nimble gives you that whole, like, you have that constant immediate interaction with your clients. So if you want to put your client's social media profile into the actual a program, you let's say for instance, you connect not only their QBO, but you also connect their social media into the dashboard. Then you have like a direct connection on what the client's doing, what they're selling, what are they pushing right now? What is their, new, their newest campaign? So it's like immediate engagement with the client. Not only are you engaging with your client, not not the client. So the does it does it replace the original yeah. dashboard? It does. Yeah, it's the, this is the beginning. This is the actual place you start now. So of course you still go into the report, you drill down like everything. But when you go in for the first time, this is the new dashboard. It looks it's good. Flight. Looks clean. It's called oh. Flight. F L I V H T. I'm thinking. I'm gonna slight. have to look at it because I I did look at. Been a graph before, um, and and I had no bites for it from my clients at all. Yeah, um, but they I mean, weren't they free for a while? They were free for a while. They're still free. Okay. They're still free. Completely free. Okay. Yeah, completely free. I mean, I think it's just mind blowing that now. Let's say I have. I'll just give an example of like you know, Community Financial and. I'm their accountant, so obviously I know what their financials look like, but I could also follow them on their social media, and I see they're doing this big social campaign for something, and I can go ahead and connect with them straight from this app and say, hey, you know, not only are we doing good with the, looks like the numbers that we talked about last month are doing great. Now you have this new campaign. Maybe we should talk about this and this and that. It's just like a, an, a way for an accountant to engage in a way they probably haven't done before. Wow. So it's just, I don't know. For me, I think it's mind blowing because it's putting it all together. Of course, if you don't want to do it, then you can keep the dashboard very plain and only look at the financials. But if you want to really get a full picture of everything that your client's doing, especially if they're heavy on the social media side, not only that, you can do email, communication, chat, all from the dashboard. So, so, so it's kind of like how, you know, you you know, in QBO, like you're in like, let's say you're in a transaction and then you could chat them in the transaction. I don't know if you guys ever do that. I use it a little bit in QBO. Oh, what is this expense about? And then the client and I talk back and forth about the transaction. Now you can do that right in flight. So you can interact with your client in the actual app. I think that's just like, yeah, wow. Yeah, same thing, same things like S-Corp, file your S-Corp and pay any taxes uh, due March 17th. It, so it's a so there's different kinds of notifications. A management, uh, your utility bill is 42 percent higher than the last two months and 56 percent higher than last year. So it's feeding interesting little tidbits. Yeah, yeah that the client understands. <laughs> so if they were going into a new campaign or something, you might be able to say, "Have you considered the county ramification, tax ramifications yes. of doing this?" 
Exactly, Dennis. That, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Like, if I, if I see that they're into something, I'd be like, hey, have you considered this? Have you considered that? And as you start creating notifications, you kind of can use them for all your clients because you basically create cards and you can use like that same campaign or that same engagement with other clients that are on there. Mm -hmm. So it, it just brings everything together. It brings, you know, the communication, the blogging, the social media, the finance, the chatting. It's almost like Slack on fire with finances. I don't know. That's why I'm like so excited because it's like, I see it as such a potential to really have everything in one place uh, when nice. it comes to client financials, which is mind-blowing to me because right. I still so haven't figured out how this, to do that. Okay. I assume they get adequate security on all this stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it brings in all of their data. So it has to. It's, still, it's still backed up by the Finograph, you know, the Finograph security, but it's just got a new... It's got the, kind of an, an updated way for you to engage with the clients. I think that's mm. the way I see it. And, uh, it's, it's definitely worth looking at, I would say. It's definitely worth looking at. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Will do. Hey, Mary, I, I have a question. You know, maybe yeah. half a year ago, you are talking about a $50 uh, financial planning program you had. Can you, you remember talking about that? It was like... Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the big what? matrix, the big spreadsheet, right? Yeah, what's, no, what's the name of that program? I was thinking of just taking a look at it. As I recall, it's yeah, like... Yeah, um, oh my gosh. I'll have to go back and look. I know it's when one of Gina's... Was it Gina's or Seth? But I, it was probably like in the middle of tax season because I was trying to figure out like a tax planning tool other than right. Tax right. Planner Pro. Right. But it was so complicated because it's like tax planning, financial planning like budgeting all in one and it was very overwhelming but i'll go back and look for it um i could probably you know what i can do dennis well whatever i was like maybe we should record it but i'll just send it to you because it's like a big old spreadsheet okay. i'll just send it to you and then you can see if you can figure it out it was too much for me <laughs> okay. it wasn't real it wasn't realistic i couldn't really figure it out and that's why it was like 50 bucks i figured worth looking at but then i spent a few days on it and i was so overwhelmed mm. that i'm like this is not going to happen i can right. figure it out yes i'll send it to you okay send me a message dennis um on facebook and i'll send it over okay uh i have a question okay um you just talked about scaling new heights and i'm wondering i wanted to let everybody know i already made i just made my reservations for airfare to boston Yay. and served my room at the Sheraton Boston Hotel. So, um, and it turns out- I hope out, we're at the Sheraton, because that's the one that's the closest. Is it? Well, it's the one that's the cheapest. It's so. the cheapest too, yeah. So really, it, I did compare to, uh, there's an email in your box today recommending that you get into the Sleater Account X block of rooms. Block, yeah. I've got my room. I reserved it for Tuesday through Friday night. Okay, because I didn't want to. I don't like to rush at the end of the conference and carrying your luggage around at the last day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I figured I'll just, in a, you know, maybe I can go do some sightseeing on Saturday before I get to the airport. My flight leaves, I think, at 5 p.m. So that gives me a little bit of time. So, um, so I'll be looking for a roommate if possible so that'd be nice because it's like i'm going to be paying like 920 What's the dates again for that linda i'm sorry the dates the dates are uh oh shoot uh, oh Tuesday oh. night september 5th through friday night september 8th no yeah yeah seven eight five and six seven eight yeah but uh, Thursday and Friday, there are no sessions. We only have sessions for two and a half days or something. So when, when are the sessions? So I wish they'd tell you that. Tuesday, Wednesday, and half a Thursday. So ha half the Thursday and Friday is going to be open to the public. Tuesday. The vendors will be open to the public. On Tuesday? No. We get the, we get the vendors to ourselves for Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday and Friday. It's on Tuesday? Huh? I I didn't get that. When I went to look at the schedule, I got that the 
the sessions were on Wednesday and Thursday and maybe a half a day Friday. So I must be looking at something wrong. Linda, uh, she said the vendors will be available. Uh, I, take that, I take that back. I take that back. It's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is this conference. Because I, okay. speak, I speak Wednesday morning. I'm one of the first speakers. So you're right. So the sessions are like Wednesday, Thursday, and half day Friday. Yeah, I think that's what I got from it. I, okay, unless, so I, the reason I had the fifth circled is I'm flying to Boston on the fifth. That's what it is. Okay. So is Intuit going to be at Account Techs? Or are they still no. going to that? So is it everything besides Intuit? It's, you know, like Sage and we're Zero? Still, we're still trying. We're still it trying. It includes Intuit, though, doesn't it? Huh? It includes Intuit. They, they haven't wanted to um, come since they started their own QB Connect. Oh, they're really going, they're going nasty, nasty. Well, That's what no, what we've got all these new management and all that. We just need to open up some dialogue and see if we can get them at least have a booth. That's uh, what I thought. I thought they'd be. Yeah, see, so they like, they like Woodard. They, they like to be it. Yeah. So, you know, we've got Sage and all these other vendors coming in that are competitors. And they're like, well, we're putting all our money in, in Woodard and um, uh, Connect. Connect. Connect, but they still need to have a presence. I'm sorry. We're, there's still 70%. Unless they want to give it up. If they want to give it up, then don't compete. <laughs> you know, I mean, Zero's going to be there. They're all, you know, all the other accounting companies. Maybe they put a kiosk there or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure some people will be presenting on QuickBooks at the conference. If they well, don't, then I probably won't go back to Sleater because I mainly use QuickBooks because it I have for so long. Well, but this, you know, you've got to look at the sessions. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think they're posted yet, so that's fine. But it's really not Sleater anymore, right? I mean, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Yeah. Okay, sixth, seventh, and eighth. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Okay, one last thing I just wanted to let you know. QBO Plus, there will be a price increase on yeah. Spin One. It's not a big one, going up to $50 a month or $500. Do you have two. one user? Yeah. Are y'all are, are having any trouble with the small clients that have one user and they're going to pay $600 a year? No. Is that compared, compared to desktop that was, you know, 100 and under 200 right and to say okay now you're 600 and you might need another app yeah you do everything well, you need this to is do the cost version not the not the, not yeah the but you've got to if you want to budget or do a class code or anything you have to have plus yeah i'm talking about the pro you know just versus pro okay online and now and that doesn't help me here because I don't have anybody on payroll. Payroll is then an additional cost? I think so, is it? And payroll is not cheap. It's a minimum of like $270 for like three people or something. Yeah. Um, so the 50 doesn't include payroll. But it's cheaper for direct deposit or like no cost for direct deposit. So there's pros and cons, yeah. But that's also, that's also, Gina, if they're not on wholesale. Right, 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 right. Right, so I mean, for those clients that are really concerned, Sarah, you can always put them on wholesale yeah. and just give them a better price. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So. I'm just talking about just selling it to the general public. The general public. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, unless they're on wholesale. Right. Because if they're if they're on wholesale, then you have access to their data, right? Oh yeah, they really yeah. need to be oh, your client. Yeah. <laughs> you, you and their account right. if they're on wholesale. <laughs> uh huh. So. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Anything else anyone wants to talk about? Oh, I was gonna gonna mention for us tax preparers, we don't get charged for a P10 number anymore. Oh, that was the big announcement. But they even they've closed down their website, but they're still gonna they're we're still required to have a P ten, right? Yeah, they just the can't charge it. you. And I guess there's a question whether or not they have to refund the money. I know. How many years have they been charging us? I can't remember. About four or five. Wow. I know it was like sixty four dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And um 
So they'll fight. I that think it'd be it. more work for them to go back and refund, though. I mean, I don't think it's really a big deal. I think it'd be more work to have them go do that and figure it out than to just say just don't charge us anymore. Right. So. Yeah, but if the if the judge says if the judge says that it was inappropriate to do it in the first yeah, yeah. place, they're gonna <laughs> have to go back and refund all that money. They've already said that they're supposed to refund yeah. it, except that it it's gonna be tied up in court for so long. Yeah. So one of these <laughs> days we might just have a nice little check, but but then you know, tax people retire. Get, get taxed on it. We get paid tax on it too, right? Well, it's, you know, it's under $500. Uh, is it really worth all that? <laughs> Girl, $500 for me is a lot of money. $500 is a lot of money, but, you know. Actually, a dollar is a lot of money to me. <laughs> I want every damn penny. <laughs> Anything I have else? a QBO question when you guys are done. Go ahead, go. Nope, offline. Off oh. Okay, and we're going to end for this week. We will see you next week, same time, same place. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.